Hi, welcome to vlog number 20. So, made it this far. That's 19 weeks of continuing vlogging uh, every week. Uh, there's a trip out to Lentwardine coming up, and I'm going to take a look at some uh, cool plugins that are free, which I found recently, which are really worth checking out. And um, potentially another look at the uh, Behringer Neutron again, a little bit more advanced processing that I've done with it recently. It's such a lovely area just here. I would not want to live here um, because basically it floods horrendously. But I mean, just check out the houses by the side of the river here. It's such a gorgeous place to come for a walk though. And you've just got all this around you. What's up? Hmm? Welcome to this week's vlog. Um, I'm back in the studio now, as you can see, and I've just been doing some stuff on this track, which you've been playing. This track was really just used for me to do some experimenting on various things. I'm going to bring up this is a track that I was playing you, so you've heard it already. Um, what we'll do is um, I will play some stuff and show you some of the cool things that I've worked on in this track. Now what I wanted to show you mainly was this here. Now this is the, the Influx uh, plugin. And I'll be honest with you, I don't quite know exactly how it works yet, although I have been experimenting with it. As you can see though, um, I'm going to just play something for you. So. Right, let's bring it back into focus. As you can see, it's a bit of a nuts plug-in. If I turn it off... I mean, not only do I think that that is the coolest graphic ever for a plugin, um, this sort of uh, bar down here on the left hand side, but it uh, it also does some crazy stuff with your audio. Um, it sort of mangles it using this flux resonator here. It basically is just applying sort of some of the kind of uh, bit kind of crushing sort of sounds and things like that to the to the audio. What's really cool though is, is the fact that you can adjust it um, to such a degree. I suppose the best thing to do is to show you this here, which is really nice the way it brings up a full on display of the um, adjustments that you can make. And on here, you've got all sorts of cool randomized things with a dice, for example. You can normalize, you can smooth, you can double mirror. So as you click on these, for example, that does all various crazy things. Um, now I can't undo it, but well, there you go. But I haven't quite finished with what I'm going to do with the sound jet. I mean, you can really get quite crazy with it if you want to. As you can see. And down here you've got your dry and wet mix here. Um, so a 
and what's absolutely insane about this plugin is that it's free. I mean, that's just totally insane. This is a free plugin. Um, I couldn't believe it myself when I when I saw it um, was free because it it's just got so many cool features in there. I think you can see just from what I'm doing, really telling you what any of the parameters does is a bit sort of silly really because the parameters in this are just all going to mangle the sound in crazy ways and you can apply it on so many different types of things. I really recommend that you uh, check this out and download it. I will um, put a link in the description uh, as to where you can go and get this plugin. But, uh, Please go and check it out free. So, what have you got to lose? Okay, I've done the crazy thing of trying to uh, remember how the hell I came up with this sound. Uh, what one of the things I've had a lot of fun with recently is the neutron. As you know, I bought this thing recently. I've always been predominantly an in the box guy when it comes to most synth most synthesis but I decided to get one of these to play with. I mean, at the end of the day, you can go and buy yourself a plugin for 150 quid, maybe, um, for a decent synth to 200 quid. Most of them lie around those sorts of margins. Yes, there are some cheaper, some more expensive, but 100 to 200 quid is a safe bet for buying a plugin. This is about two to 250, depending on where you look. When you think about what you're getting for your money, you're getting um, something that is basically original, the Neutron's original, and it's based upon things like Moogs and things like that. So it's, from my perspective, it was a great thing to learn um, from, and I have to say, I've been learning a hell of a lot with this particular device. Um, I'm gonna play a note now and hear the craziness for yourself. <laughs> Whoa. I can't even remember how I actually came up with the sound, but basically, over here, you've got the patching. And if I take a look at what I've been doing, I've been feeding out these envelopes. So this is envelope one and envelope two, which is these two here, okay? And then I fed those out into the attenuators, which are here. Now what you won't see, or well, I've never really seen it, but then maybe I haven't dove in uh, depth onto the plugin so much, is things like attenuators, which enable you to have a finer rate of control over the effect that you're applying. So it sounds all crazy, but it's really simple. The envelopes, your attack, decay, sustain, and release, the shaping aspect of a sound, so how, how fast a sound comes in in volume, uh, for example, you might use an envelope for that. The decay time, the sustain time of the sound, and the release of the sound. These are all then controlled via these envelopes here. Now I fed them out to the attenuators, which enables me to have a finer control over what these do. Now, what does that then lead into? So we've got one of the envelopes is going to the attenuator, the attenuator is coming out to the LFO rate. So that's the LFO up here, the rate up here. And you can hear it as it kind of, you'll see this like flashing here. Basically, I've got one of the envelopes coming out and going into the LFO rate. That means that the time of the rate is governed by this. So like, if I turn the decay down, uh, I think it's envelope one, let me just trace it through. This is all a bit of a puzzle for me, so you'll have to bear with me. Right, here we go. If we, Yeah, you can see as I'm adjusting this here. And that's the sustain seems to be doing the most on this one. So what's the other one going into? Um, let's have a look. Uh, attenuated to resonation. So that's here, the resonator. Okay, so that is... Uh, 
Let's see if I play with this one first. Don't even know. <laughs> As you can see, crazy noises. But what I need to do is to just trace where I'm going with this because I won't be able to give you an example otherwise as to where things are going. So the resonator is coming from, oh my God, attenuator two, attenuator two is envelope two. Oh, so, em sorry, yes, I made a mistake earlier, as you can see, attenuator two is envelope two. So this is, sorry, adjusting the resonator. See, I'm already losing track of it. So that's this, um, the resonator is the, the is the point of which the peak of the frequency cutoff is wobbling around. So, so this bit here, which adjusts the sweep of the frequency being adjusted. So in this case, what I have it set to is a low pass. So it gets rid of all the, for those of us who are not in the know of all this stuff, all the trebly stuff gets cut out with this. This then places a resonatory peak. So if you imagine at that point where it's cutting off all the treble, it then peaks it upwards. That's the best way I can describe it. I'll try and go into depth on that one a bit more if anybody ever is interested, but those of us in the know probably understand what the heck I'm on about. Um, and this is adjusting all of that, okay? So forgive me, I got that wrong. It's the envelope one that I've traced back to the attenuator in and the attenuator out if one goes to the LFO rate. So this one is what's affecting the rate. That probably explains why I didn't do much earlier. Now if I, there we go, that makes more sense. As I'm adjusting the envelope one, you can see that it's adjusting the flashing light now. So there you go. As you can see, once you start messing with the patching on one of these devices, you literally are going into insane territory with the sound. I think I was making helicopter sounds last time with this, and you can see why. Oh, I'm only using one oscillator. <laughs> now, here's something you can't do very easily on a plugin. If I record the note. Oh. Right. As you can see there, I just played a note and it just went absolutely insane. The more I play, the more insane it seems to get. Um, you can literally do this all night long and uh, you come up with some of the most insane stuff ever. I, uh, I certainly want to do like a third part on my experience with the Neutron. What I enabled myself to do on my last play with this thing was to just go absolutely insane with the patch bay here and really start discovering what happens when you feed one thing into another. And the beauty with this is it's purely safe. It's purely experimental. You can go for it. You can absolutely just do all sorts of crazy sounds. And you just come up with something by the end of it that just sounds absolutely unique, different. And the experience you get from using something like this compared to a plugin is almost the tactile nature and the response of the device. I can't really describe it as anything more than that. You, you begin to learn the um, randomness and chaoticness of um, analog equipment. Do I recommend you get one of these Neutrons and just play with one? Heck yeah, definitely. I would say go for it. And I suppose on that note, really, I should end this vlog because uh, I've been waffling on for ages about the Neutron. Um, so thanks for checking out vlog number 20. You should see a bit more presence of me appearing on Instagram if I can get my um, stuff sorted out. 
uh, definitely part of my uh, looking into the whole business and uh, side of doing the music production um, and being a mu- if I could speak properly, that would help. Definitely from the perspective of what I've been looking at. Um, I want to be posting more stuff up out there. I want to be sharing more of this stuff. Um, I'm getting better with uh, explaining things as well, which is a challenge in itself. Because trying to record stuff and uh, maintain um, a real good kind of uh, quality behind everything that I'm doing is is the most difficult part. Because I've never really had to explain it. Um, I just play with it, and I've spent years learning how uh, to mix and to to play and how to dive in. And mentally, c- creating music is something that I'm quite, quite, uh, I suppose, used to in my head, but not used to getting it out there on paper so much. So I want to get better at explaining the things that I've learned over the years and hopefully share those things uh, more so with everybody out there. Plus, I still want to kind of give everybody an overview of what I'm doing and where I'm going with it all all the time. So, yeah, hopefully um, there'll be more stuff in the pipeline for you to uh, to check out. So thanks for watching the vlog again. And uh, keep an eye on what's going on. Uh, please check out my Instagram account. Please check out my Facebook account. Please check out my website. Hopefully this week or soon, I'll get everything linked down below in the description so you can get to everything of mine. And uh, I hope you can uh, hope you can get a chance to go and see what else I'm up to. Thanks very much. Cheers. Did I shoot you? Yes, multiple times. Damn. I must be a good shot. <laughs>